Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to chemistry. We're still on unit one, this is lesson seven, and today we're going to talk about ways to separate, physically separate, the components of a mixture. Remember that mixtures are different atoms or different compounds or different atoms and compounds just hanging out in the same container. When you put them together, there's no chemical reaction and the components of a mixture retain their individual properties. So when you mix water with um, you know, sugar, water, water still boils around the same temperature, sugar still boils at the same temperature. Uh, there's no real deviation in their properties. Water still has the same density, sugar still has the same density, for the most part. Uh, there is some variation, for, for our, for, but for our purposes, the components of a mixture retain their properties. For example, when I mix iron and sulfur, the iron is still magnetic and the sulfur is still yellow. Their properties don't change because they don't react chemically, okay? So we're going to talk about three different methods to separate a mixture. There are many, but this is the three we're going to talk about. The first method is called fractional distillation. It's vitally important in the oil industry because oil is just a big, gigantic mixture of a whole bunch of smaller compounds. And so through the process of fractional distillation, those compounds can be separated. Fractional distillation is basically the separation of a mixture based on boiling point. Which requires the components to have very different boiling points. I'm going to do a demonstration for you in class uh, That's for where we distill a mixture. Um, but for now, I'll give you the example of alcohol and water. So here in this little thing, that's where you would put your mixture of alcohol and water. The alcohol has a boiling point of about 80 degrees Celsius. The water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So if now you add heat, the substance with the lower boiling point will begin to boil. So boil means go from the liquid phase to the gas phase. You will have alcohol vapor up here. This will be alcohol as a gas. The little g stands for gas. It goes, it's stoppered up here, so it goes through this tube where cold water is pumped on the outside of it. That cold water causes the alcohol as a gas to turn into a liquid. And then these drops that are accumulated over here are close to pure alcohol. I'll put it down here. This is close to pure alcohol. And the water remains as long as we keep that temperature, let me just raise this, the alcohol uh, will be collected over here and the water will remain over here as long as we don't keep that temperature really higher than 80. Some water will still evaporate and so while I say pure alcohol, recognize that there will be some water that evaporates and also gets collected there, but will, it will be much purer than the mixture and the more times you do this process, the purer and purer your fractions become, okay? With gasoline, they do the same thing. So they take oil, not gasoline, but they take oil and they heat it up. And the lighter components of oil, like propane and butane, will boil off first and be collected. And then the heavier components, like gasoline and things they make plastic out of, will be collected later because they have higher boiling points. So it's separation of a mixture based on boiling point, and I will model that for you. We'll demonstrate it in class on Tuesday, on Tuesday, okay? Another method of separating the components of a mixture is filtration. And really, separation of um, via filtration is one that you've seen before if you've ever made coffee or tea. Um, what it is separation of a mixture based on is solubility and phase. So whether or not something dissolves 
and what phase they're in. Okay, so you have this diagram in your notes, and I'm going to show you this one right now. We have a mixture that we put in here. And anything that's liquid or dissolved in the liquid, so anything that's liquid or dissolved in the liquid phase, which we refer to as aqueous, will drip through, okay? So aqueous means dissolved, just a reminder. A lot of times that liquid is water. Anything that's solid will remain on the filter paper. So I have um, a couple chemicals here. This is my first chemical. Okay, you can see that it's a homogeneous mixture. It's a mixture of potassium iodide dissolved in water. No worries. But anyway, I'm going to mix that with this one, which is another homogeneous solution. I'll do this in front of you. I just let me get one in. Okay, so here is our first component, and I'm just going to add this one to it. Hopefully you can see, because I can't see if you can see. But watch, watch, watch. Okay, and this is what we have going on. Mm, definitely made something new. Definitely a chemical change. I am being a bad chemist. Better. So now I'm going to separate the components of this mixture. You can tell that it's heterogeneous. You can definitely see two visible parts. I'm going to separate it based on the process of filtration. So filtration requires a funnel um, and some filter paper. This is filter paper, okay? So we fold the filter paper so that it fits inside the funnel. Fold it like a taco and then in half again. And I'm just gonna squirt some water into it so that it sticks. Okay, so now we have the filter paper inside the funnel. And I'm slowly going to pour this mixture into my filter paper. And we'll let that go and I'll keep adding it and then I'll show you that in a little bit what it looks like. But you can already begin to see that the liquid dripping out is less yellow. There'll be some contamination just like in the other. The more you filter, the purer it becomes. But what will happen is what's dissolved and the water will pass through, but any solid that remains will remain on the filter paper. So we separate based on phase. The dissolved stuff passes with the liquid, the solid stuff stays. Okay. So filtration is not a very good way to um, separate salt from water because the salt's dissolved. But it's a great way to separate sand from water because sand doesn't dissolve. Or even pepper from water. Remember we talked in class about skimming it off? You could also filter it and the pepper would remain on the filter but the salt water would drip through. Okay? So that's our second method. The solid substance will remain on the filter paper and the dissolved substances which is referred to as aqueous, will pass through with the liquid. And the final method that I want to talk about today is called chromatography. And I'm going to show you an example of this as well. Chromatography is separation of components of a mixture based on solubility, based on how well they dissolve in each phase. And solubility is determined by something called polarity, okay? Which you don't know anything about polarity yet, but I promise you will real soon. So there's really two what we call phases, but don't think of them as really solid liquid gas. There's two parts in chromatography. There's the stationary phase, which in this case is going to be paper. 
stationary phase just means that it doesn't move. So the paper is going to serve as a stationary phase here. You could use like coffee filter paper or you could use a paper towel, but that's our stationary phase. It's not going to move. And then inside the dish in this picture, there's a liquid. It's a solvent. And that's called the mobile phase. Okay? And what I'm going to do is add my mixture to this paper. So my mixture here is homogeneous this time. It's a black liquid. And so what I'm going to do is just place a drop of it onto this paper. Okay, here's the paper. I'm just going to place a drop of it onto the paper. And I marked my starting place. Okay. And I think that's probably good. I'm just going to wave it a little bit to dry it. And now I'm going to place the paper in my solvent. My solvent in this example is water. Now when I place the paper inside, I want the paper to be in the solvent, but not my mixture. So I'm going to fold this over so that the paper, let me turn it so you could see it, so that the paper is in the solvent, but the mixture that I've placed on there is not. And what you'll notice happening, you can see it better in the pictures in your notes, okay, is that the water begins to wick up the paper, okay? I don't know if you can see it here, but the, probably not, but the water is being traveled up the paper. And we'll just let that go too and um, see what happens after it, while we record some information. I'm going to add a little bit more of our crazy mixture here, the yellow thing, our heterogeneous mixture to this filter paper so that you can see once it's done what we have going on. Okay, you can see how thick the solid is here at the bottom. Okay, so since water is what water is a polar molecule, maybe we use water. As this mixture begins to, um, as the water begins to hit this mixture, as you can see in your pictures, it's going to separate the components of a mixture based on polarity. And so up here, this travels with the water, which means it dissolves the best in the water. In your solvent. And this down here dissolves the least, the worst. And so you can separate the components of the mixture based on their ability to dissolve. Now, I started one um, a little bit ago, and I just want to show you so that you can get an idea. This was, this was your dye. So after we allow this to run, you can see that the blue traveled the furthest, which means it dissolved the best in the water, and the pink dissolved the, dissolved the worst because it didn't travel very far. Okay, if you use different solvents with the same mixture, you can get different separation. So this time I used, it's the same mixture, but I put, I used alcohol as the solvent instead of water. And you can see only the blue really separated from the rest of the dyes. Okay, so it's separation based on ability to dissolve. Now I know we're running out of time, so let me just show you. You can notice here that our mixture is separating. And if I pour a little bit of this water off and open this up for you, I probably should just show you. Oh boy, making a mess. But there's all kinds of solid on top of the filter paper here. Okay? So those are some methods of separating a mixture. In class on Tuesday, I'll, I'll demonstrate for you distillation. Okay? Have a great night. There's nothing to write down on separate paper today. I'll just simply check your notes. Bye-bye.